Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to Teach Me Tech, which is the amazing place to be online to find out more about the latest in cloud technology and how you can actually set up and start to use some of the awesome tools. I'm Laurel Gray, and I'm joined by the fantastic Carl Taylor. He's here from the Automation Agency, and Carl is an automation expert, or just an expert, as I tell him pretty much every time I see him. Hello, the experts in the room. Uh, it's so great to have you. And you recently joined us for an intro episode on how to get started with Active Campaign. And today, we're going to take it one step further and talk a little bit more about how to get more out of Active Campaign. Yay! I can't wait for that. I'm so excited. So, what are we actually going to cover today? Well, you'll find out before we tell you two very quick things. The first thing is please follow along. Grab your dog, grab your cat, grab your mobile device, a cup of coffee, your laptop, whatever you've got, get ready to follow along because if you have already set up Active Campaign in your first episode, you'll be able to get so much more out of it here. The second thing is to please ask and share. So, any kind of social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or maybe even Google Plus, if you're so inclined, use the hashtag TeachMeTech, and we'll be able to respond to your comments and your feedback. So thank you for that in advance. All right, so what are we going to cover today? Well, first of all, we'll talk about what we covered off in the first episode on how to get started with Active Campaign, how to capture additional contacts, and all the many ways that you can do that, how to set up a basic automation within Active Campaign. Understanding then the CRM portion, which we did not cover at all in the first episode. And then how to set up a sales automation using that CRM data. Understanding reporting, so how can you read that information that you get after you've sent the campaign. And then some third party integrations you may want to consider, as well as what's ahead for the future of Active Campaign. Ooh, I can't wait for that. And finally, some case studies and success stories. So, all right, let's get started. Basically, I just started with Active Campaign a couple of weeks ago with my business. So this has been awesome learning so many different things. So let's get started. Essentially, what did we cover off in the first episode? Well, a lot of different things. Carl, can you give us a recap? Yeah, so well, we created a trial Active Campaign account. So we created an account. We created our first list that you need to have a list if you're going to be able to send broadcast emails. Uh, we then imported some contacts very quickly and easily. Uh, and then we created our first campaign and, and showed you how the email builder works and uh, to get you to start sending that out. And we had a brief overview of automations and what they are and how you could use them. And we'll go a lot deeper in that today, though, I, I mm. think. Absolutely. And even for someone who's used Active Campaign a little bit, such as myself, I got so much value out of that first episode and that information. So I can't wait to see what you're going to share today. Ooh. Now, Next thing, capturing additional contacts. Mm -hmm. So we, we touched off on how to import your first contacts into Active Campaign, but there is so much more that you can do. Are you able to walk us through? Absolutely. So yeah, we can capture our existing contacts quite easily into Active Campaign through an import or manually adding them. But what if you want to put a form on your website? What if you want to capture people who come to your website, fill in a form, and get those leads into Active Campaign? So we do that by building a form in Active Campaign. So I'll show you that in just a second. Some other options are uh, utilizing some integrations out there like uh, Zapier, which can bring in when something happens in one tool, add them to Active Campaign or do something else in Active Campaign. Uh, an example of that might be uh, a Survey Monkey survey. You've sent someone the survey. If someone fills in that survey, you want to add them to Active Campaign. So there's other ways to capture additional contacts through integrations and through the form. So let's jump on the computer and show you how to build a form. Ooh, awesome. All right. Can't wait. So um, it's really simple. You can see here we're back on the dashboard, and there is a nice big menu button that says Form. So we're going to click on that. Awesome. And Carl, can you just clarify as well, when you say forms, you mean uh, something that can be embedded into either a website, perhaps into social media. Can you clarify what you mean with forms? Yeah, so there's a few different form options. What a form is, is basically a field, like, uh, you know, 
some fields that someone can personally fill in and click the submit button or register button or something like that, which then basically sends their information they've provided into Active Campaign. So it could be put on your website, it could be embedded as a part of your, your social media as a Facebook page, um, and it can be linked to through multiple different ways. But yeah, it's a form that someone can fill in online, and when they hit submit, it sends them to Active Campaign. Mm, okay. All right. So uh, back here on the screen, we're going to go create a new form. And what we're going to do is we're going to give the form a name. So those of you who remember from the first episode, I talked about having a naming convention. Really good idea to come up with some sort of naming convention. Uh, for me, let's say this one's going to go on a landing page for people to opt in. So I would typically use a naming convention like opt-in to tell me it's an opt-in form and uh, then give it a name. So maybe we'll call this a free report on uh, Colin. On why Colin is awesome. Mm. Yeah, I know you'll like Boy, that. Boy, I could actually write that report right now for you <laughs> if you wanted. <laughs> the next thing it's going to ask us is what type of form are you wanting to create? So Active Campaign in their form builder give you uh, multiple different forms. Most of the time, all you're going to need is this inline form. This is the type of form that you're embedding onto a web page or you might put um, like on the sidebar or uh, if a developer says, hey, I need your form code, they're really asking for an inline form. Uh, Active Campaign does allow you to have some other features like a floating bar, which basically means at the top of your, your website there can be a bar that kind of floats and they can click on that mm. to capture the details. There's a floating box. So you can see here the little box. That means over here there would be a, a box that people could opt in on, and then there's a modal. And, and what that means is it's a timed pop-up. When someone comes to your website within maybe 30 seconds, if that's what you set it to, it would pop up and uh, oh. they would see it. So you get all that built in. You don't need third-party apps to, to use those functions. Wait a minute, wait. So you're saying that you don't even need, like let's say I have a WordPress website. For the inline form, I would need to provide the code to my developer or put it in myself. But you're saying for the floating bar, the box, and the modal, it, it just does it automatically. Exactly. It just gives oh, you the code wow. that you put on your website or you use the WordPress plugin, and it will add it to your site in exactly wow. the same way. That is really cool. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. So no complex coding is needed. Not anymore. Mm. So uh, we, we're just going to choose an inline form. And then what we can do is we can set actions. So what happens when someone fills in this form? So we can subscribe them to a list, which is pretty well always what you're going to want to do. So we've got our one list of nurture. Uh, we can then add another action. So we can subscribe them to a list. We could then oh. add a tag. So we can now add a tag to that, and we're going to say opt-in um, free report on awesome colon. <laughs> right? So now we've got a tag that we can track who has come through this form. We could segment them, or we can just track that easily. And mm. uh, we can then also, from here, um, email results. So you might want to be receiving an email to you to say someone's filled in this form. Wow. And you can add all that. So you can just keep adding actions this is awesome. uh, very easily, and you can create your form. So based on when people fill in this form, this is what will happen. Now, is this a relatively new feature? Yes, it is campaign? within weeks. <gasps> <Ooh. laughs> Great. Um, and by the way, Colin, Fir uh, Colin is referring to Colin Firth. Yes. For those of you who were not watching the first episode. Yes. Or do not know about my unhealthy obsession with Colin Firth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so once we get into the form, you'll notice from those who were following along from the last episode that the, the form builder is very similar to the builder for the email campaigns. So you can move things around. Uh, you can add extra fields. So you know some people get confused. They see full name, and, and they think, well, you know, uh, is that first name or last name? Well, when you use the full name field, if someone gives you their first name, it will store it in the first name section. If they give you the first name and last name, it automatically knows. It detects that, and it will split the name into a first mm. name and last name. But if you specifically want to ask someone so uh, for both fields, then what you do is you delete the full name, and then you can drag in mm. first name Awesome. And so last expert name. hacks here. Yeah. Great. Um, so we can move things around. We might go, actually, I want to get their email address first. We can change uh, the button. So we clicked, I just clicked on the button there, and now I'm going to change that to say, give me my free stuff. Mm -hmm. right? cool. uh, we can change the styling. So if we click over here on the side, we've, you'll see there's fields, there's text, which changes kind of the text of things, and then there is the style. And so from here, you can change the layout. So here, if I want the fields to all be next to each other, simple click of the button like that. 
if I'm wanting to change the color of my form to be red, if I want to make there be a border, I can set a border oh, very easily. This is awesome. I'm just thinking of like even a year ago, customizing all this stuff on WordPress was such a hassle using CSS and HTML. But you're saying it's just you do it here, and then when you embed the code, it's done for you. Absolutely. Oh, and then for awesome. those who are more experts and do know what CSS is and can use it, they also have the ability to add that custom CSS. They've got this cool little uh, inspector, which for the, the coders will know how useful that is to know what mm. to style. So uh, you can still do the advanced things. You can turn off the active campaign branding from your, your form, obviously, as oh well. And you can then keep adding. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.